Yes, that's correct. The Moaning Show is one year old today. I've actually concentrated on something long enough to keep it going for a year. Self-admittedly, there have been periods where I haven't done an episode. It's been about a month since the last one, and it's uh, going to be one per month from now on. Uh, as you saw in the introduction there, it's basically so I don't get annoyed at the lack of views per video per week because I was getting say 12 views a week for a for a single video so welcome to the moaning show episode 39 uh, the format is pretty much gonna stay the same um, a few of you have been asking you know what's happened to the show uh, it's basically so it's less hassle for you per week so what I'm going to be doing is the moaning show obviously episode 39 this edition and it's the moaning show October in this particular edition I'm going to talk about the world around us now the first thing is that you notice on the television it's all the same fucking news each and every day you know this suicide bomb attack in Kabul or Syria and it's like Ugh. you're thinking yeah where's the proper news and we do get some proper news just recently we've had uh, um, abductions and things like that and of course the uh, the tale of the teacher and the 15 year old girl going to France now that's touching dangerous ground but if you if you're a 30 to 35 year old teacher and you start to fancy a 15 year old girl then something's wrong up here Yes, they dress provocatively, and that's a big word for me. But you've got to be careful. And that's why they supposedly ran away to France. I mean, CCTV footage picked him up and, you know, both of them gone to France and please were said look come home things like that to the girl now I have no idea how much trouble the teacher is going to be in because apparently he has to come back to the UK where he will probably be uh, dismissed from his position as a teacher he will never be able to work as a teacher again and quite frankly by doing what he did or going to France with this girl it has basically not only jeopardized his, his career but also his life as well because of another thing I'd like to moan about the paparazzi now I may or may not have moaned about the majority of these things that I'm going to talk about today because of the fact that no matter where you turn the paparazzi are always there you know going to celebrities and I use the term celebrity in its broadest possible sense you get these absolute dregs of humanity from programs like The Only Way is Essex or Made in Chelsea or Gypsy fucking Greek bastard assholes and things like that they are celebrities they've got no talent they are on TV because some numpty from Holland decided to put a load of people in a fucking building and have cameras watching them nearly 12 fucking years ago that's right 12 bastard bastard years we've been watching this reality shite but it's because of this reality shite that people like Jordan uh, Cheryl Cole to a certain degree you know Simon Cowell all, all these bellends are all fucking famous riches 
they shit money these people and you get the normal upstanding British people I say British I should say English the normal people that go to work or try to go to work I'll come back to that a bit later but uh, it's all about these absolute assholes just getting just doing things that they want to do 24 7 365 and that's what's wrong with this world and not only this country this way of life this celebrity fandom it's a load of shit these guys haven't done a day's work in their fucking lives you know and they get paid millions per year or maybe not millions per year but they're extremely well off they're fine they don't have to do anything they get the old photo shoot here or there you know they appear in a like GQ magazine or a fashion magazine the women appear maybe loaded or FHM or Heat or Esquire or whatever the fuck you're going to be reading and they're set up for the next six months or so you know people like Jessica Jane Clement bellends like that you know just complete and total wastes of oxygen you know I wouldn't fart in these people's faces to give them fucking a breath of air you know they're that worthless and if you watch these programs you're just as bad as them I don't care what comments I'm gonna get in the comment box if any or if anyone's gonna say oh, I like the only way is Essex if you like the only way is Essex there is something fucking wrong with you you're just as daft as they are you're part of this whole circle of fuck basically that contributes every day to these people's pockets you know you are the reason that these people can be up at half past 11 in the morning and go to bed at say 5 o'clock in the morning the following day you're part of the reason that these people can do this you know it's saying the people that win the X Factor are going to be set for life if they work it out because the majority of people who win X Factor and reality programs like that are in the public spotlight for say 6 to 8 months and then they start to fade away until the next one comes back but the paparazzi follow to go back to what I was moaning at follow these idiots around just so say like the women when they get out of a car they put one leg out of a car and the paparazzi right there to try and get a crotch shot to see if they're wearing pants or not that's sad if they're wearing pants you know so what if they're not you get a glimpse of what's underneath the skirt and these women are stupid enough out of the car one leg at a time yeah and they're also stupid enough to wear a short enough skirt so that they get caught out that's one of the worst things but it's not just the men it's the people that take these pictures they get paid I think per picture and the higher the celebrity um, the more money they get for instance since the last Moni show we've had this um, topless Kate Middleton fiasco now for a start because of what happened to Diana in 1997 where the paparazzi were chasing her crashed and she died the mere fact that Kate Middleton and Prince William were on holiday on a beach is you know that that's fine it's their holiday but the mere fact she took her top off realizing that the paparazzi could be here there or everywhere now I don't mean to insult her intelligence but for doing just that it's not all up here yes she's a university student yes it was a private occasion but you have to say considering who she is what she is because she is our future queen there's no doubt about it 
the problem with what she did was the fact that yes okay it should have been a private time for them husband and wife remember but other than certain celebrities she is the most famous woman on the planet give or take a few people she took her top off started to sunbathe there's what's wrong already and yet they managed to successfully stop the papers producing these pictures even though agencies all over the world have been emailed these pictures they've been given these pictures and they're starting to publish them in magazines and things like that so basically by, po by not posing topless but by being topless she sort of nailed put a nail in her own coffin now this is what drove Diana to die Princess Diana to die was the paparazzi chasing them and the royal family and all the guards and all of the fucking security detail have got to be extremely careful with how they go about future um, things like that you know future endeavours future uh, state visits and things like that future holidays you've got to have a security detail say uh, Secret Service scoping out all the possible uh, photographer locations maybe patrolling the area within a say a, a mile radius or so then perhaps if you get the yes uh, everything's all clear here uh, part station A and it goes around the mile radius I don't know how many people they could employ. It could be a tremendous waste of uh, of money in the short term. But if you think about it in the long term, if what happens to Kate, hap uh, if what happened to Diana happens to Kate Middleton, then the paparazzi will be to blame, things like that, for the no privacy, lack of privacy, things like that. So the paparazzi are complete assholes, but they do have to do the job they do because they get paid per picture. I seem to remember there was one uh, interview with Victoria Beckham or just before she got married to David where she got approached by a member of the paparazzi and he actually asked do you mind if I take a photograph and she said I'm, I'm she basically said something along the lines of I'm quite surprised you've actually asked I'm not feeling particularly brilliant do you mind if I don't and he said no problem so some paparazzi I'd say minuscule percentage maybe up to five uh, relatively um, not bothered about it but it's all relative if you're all if you've got a number of celebrities especially female celebrities that are out on the night getting pissed and things like that you may get the odd um, picture you know the odd uh, rude picture and things like that and another thing as well with uh, these types of people that take these excuse me these photographs if for instance they've got a I'm not sure what the type of camera is but something like a, a flash picture type thing where shutter I think it's called where you take the picture and it takes multiple pictures over a second so and someone's blinking like that so if they're like that and all they're doing is blinking all they're doing is blinking and yet one of the pictures could be sent to a newspaper a tabloid like the sun mirror star whatever and the picture is a completely normal person I say normal person say like Jeremy Clarkson for instance or no let's not say Clarkson he's hated uh, well let's, let's go Prince William no Prince Harry he's, he's a better target so Prince Harry's been a graph like that yeah and the papers will print Harry in drunk drunken binge and all he's done is blink but because these cameras go and 
and they these papers go blah 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 and when a celebrity goes to um say or challenges them and the celebrity's right because all he was doing was blinking whatever then these papers will print an apology but you notice most of these headlines with Harry binge hell or something like that are always on the front page or first couple of pages the apology that these papers will print is on page 56 or 37 and it's always in the bottom left hand corner or top left hand corner or whatever and the space is about that big whether the front page is obviously the size of a page saying Prince Harry was found yesterday at 2am drinking his ass off for a start he's I th Prince Harry I think is much younger than me or he's the same year same age as me so he's almost he's the other side of 25 in other words he's a man he can do what he wants he's royalty for heaven's sake and that's what's wrong with these paparazzi arse wipes. On to the whole, you know, the natural mix with celebrity. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, you get the normal, I say normal, you get the usual amount of people that go to work. That do their nine to five or eight till six or if you're unlucky enough you do the night shift or whatever and the amount of people searching for a way to better their lives in other words maybe play lottery or bingo and the amount of fucking bingo adverts and shit like that is ridiculous at the moment but work now if you are unlucky enough to uh, be stuck in a job that you don't like but you can do you have to do it see if bills didn't bills didn't exist you know food no, I wouldn't say food uh, water bills electricity bills gas bills phone bills broadband bills TV bills, you know, things like Sky, things like that. If bills didn't exist, I wonder what percentage of the world's population would work. I would say less than 20, maybe even less than 15. If you didn't have to pay a bill in your entire life, you wouldn't work. It's been said that the human race needs to work to keep sane. I could challenge that easy. You can find enough things to do uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis to do. If money didn't exist and things like that, I could do things for X amount of time. For instance, you could have an idea uh, to write a series of stories or things like that. I like writing stories. The amount of episode synopsis or synopsi or whatever the fucking plural is, the amount of episode ideas I have for some of my favourite TV shows and a few of ones of my own creation that I thought of, that I've actually put typed out on my computer but not printed off or whatever it's what's called fan fiction the amount of that I can do per series I've written one uh, series of a spin-off from a TV show in about 30 page stories now obviously stories can be lengthened out in script form or whatever but I've done one series maybe one and a half series of this thing. I started back in 2003, 
and I still haven't finished. I'm nowhere near finished. I've got seven series of this thing. I've done one and a half or one and a bit. I've also got this series of my own creation that I've written uh, bits out for or episode titles out for. None of this will come to fruition because I'm always thinking more stuff to do. Plus you've got the video games that I play and things like that. You've got uh, normal everyday life that gets in the way and everyone watching will know what I'm talking about. But what I'm trying to get at is I could find plenty of things to do. And if you can't find anything to do, go out for a walk. I know that's rich coming from someone my size, but if you find that there's nothing to do or you know, say like if you can't find anything to do or can't remember anything to do or you just want to do something, go out for a walk, go out to the beach or seaside or whatever, just go out somewhere. Yes, you've got your normal shopping, your food shopping, your clothes shopping and your sort of like entertainment shopping. The majority of people, I would guess, have got a selection of movies to watch on home entertainment system either dvd blu-ray digital whatever the majority of dvds and games i have i could spend if i watch them all thoroughly you know watch them all um if i played them all from start to finish if i can yeah in other words, if you don't get shot in the first couple of seconds of a shooting game, or if there's a puzzle game you can't quite work out, or, or whatever. What I'm saying is, is that the human race has created items to amuse itself over the years. That's what I'm trying to say. These items to amuse ourselves could easily take the place of work if bills didn't exist. You know, hobbies like sailing, climbing, abseiling, you know, sports hobbies. If you're a fan of a professional sports team, you go follow them if money didn't exist or if bills didn't exist, but they do. So the majority of us have to grind in a nine to five job, in an eight to six job, in a, I don't know, in whatever type hours you can do and find. And that's what I'm coming to right now. At the start of August, due to monetary reasons, you know, financial reasons in the family, I've had to start claiming job seekers allowance. In other words, I'm on the dole. I'm for the first time in about two years since I lost my previous job, I am officially unemployed actively seeking work now i didn't want to go on uh, job seekers allowance i didn't want to go on the dole but i've had to for financial reasons yes it's given me a little bit of money in my uh, pocket and i've managed to get a couple of things that i wanted and another thing that i have wanted for about a year is uh, finally in my sights And I'm looking forward to that but the fact that I've had to go on to the doll had to go on to um, job seekers allowance is a reflection of how this world has been you know throughout time but especially since the stock market crash of 2008 I worked at Walworths I loved that job there were no targets, there were no, you know, heights to fill or, you know, you didn't have to get here, you didn't have to do so much a day, you just did the day's work. You went home and you forgot about it. And you went in for your next shift and did it all over again. These days, there's too much emphasis on how many things you sell per day, you've got to hit, say, like, 20 per day if you hit anything less than that you're in trouble what a load of shit yes businesses have to make profit it's the whole reason they're in business but you shouldn't have to go to work 
we'll go to a sales job and say that your target for the day is 20 and you've hit 17 of whatever of item X and you're supposed to sell 20 per day if you get 20 or 20 plus you're fine you got nothing to worry about you come in for the next shift and you do it all over again but these companies that rely on fucking targets and call centers and fucking you're supposed to do X amount of calls per hour what if you get a complicated call that takes up the whole fucking hour and you've done one you're fucked but going back to the sales thing if you sell 19, 19 you're probably okay but if you do say 12 to 17 or say 17 less you're in shit street you get a fucking disciplinary thing with the manager and that's a load of shit so like if you do your absolute best to get 20, and this is obviously an example, and you've managed to get 16. And you get, sp you get spoken to by the manager saying, why didn't you get 20? Now the manager knows why you didn't get 20. Your colleagues know why you didn't get 20. They probably didn't get 20 themselves. So the managers had to waste an extra, say, 10, 15 minutes per person that works in the shop to, to talk to them to say, why didn't you get 20? As I say, the manager knows why he didn't get 20. But because he's got his managers and higher-uppers talking to him, saying, oh, your store's targets are down by 20% or 25%, it's like, fuck off. And that's why managers exist in you know the working world they're supposed to manage professionally these people that you know get targets or can't quite manage targets or whatever but fucking targets in jobs are fucking argh. you know you, you can't move for a job with fucking targets and I don't want a job with targets I want to go to work you know, get there, do me shift, go home, not worry about it. Nearly every job in the world has fucking targets. Fuck targets. So like if you're a delivery driver, you've got to make X amount of deliveries a day. If there's bad traffic or an accident or something, again, you are completely buggered. It's not fair. This world is not fair. It's a piece of shit. And that's what I'm trying to get at. That's why the Moaning Show exists. That's why I've brought it back in this new format. I look at the clock. The running time for this video so far is nearly half an hour. I understand, or I've understood, due to the amount of views I've got, you know, since I started the Moaning Show, that people can't spend half an hour a week or or whatever watching me ramble on about shit that pisses me off. I understand. That's why I've come to this new format. Half an hour a month. Because anything that I've seen on the TV or whatever that's really got my... really twisted my intestines to fucking breaking point, I can on that. No problem. Now, I understand this is a very strange uh, time to put out the Moaning Show, but as I say, the Moaning Show is a year old today. Um, I thank all of those that have watched over the uh, past 12 months for watching. But now, as I will start to do um, uh, per, per video per month now, I'm actually going to ask you my viewers however many of you there are to give me your thoughts on what i've just complained about and if you can please interact with me by posting your own little video say like if you've got a webcam or whatever send it as a video response or i know many of you probably haven't got uh, YouTube accounts but if you can maybe 
send a video to the email address on the screen. I don't know if your bandwidth or fucking email boxes are capable of doing this, but send me a, a comment that I can put up on replies, and maybe I'll do two videos a month. One to tell you about what I'm talking, and say like, the Moaning Show episode 38 extra, or episode 39 extra, or replies, RE Moaning Show uh, 39. So give us a video, give us a few comments, and I'll say, say like two weeks after I post the video up, I'll give you a um, uh, video of people's own thoughts about paparazzi, about celebrity, about... Um, work and about life in general about the news things like that and let's see what you've got to say let's let's make this more interactive and but perhaps this thing will start to grow so i uh, thank you for watching i hope that you've uh, um been pleased by the return speak but i feel that doing one a week is not worth the effort for the amount of views I was getting. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for hopefully the replies, things like that. If not, I'll see you next time for the Moaning Show November.